So uh, a little bit about me. I'm a, uh, I'm, a, I'm a husband. You know, this this hierarchy used to look a little different before. Um, uh, I'm, I'm a husband, uh, a son, a father, uh, a teacher. I worked. I spent about ten years at a university, just doing a, a lot of research and, and development. And uh, now I am a full-time Angular developer. So. Um, one of the things that I've always been interested, uh, you know, ever since I started teaching was just to be able to uh, deliver live content to students, uh, be able to teach uh, a lot of things and communicate and, and so on. So um, as you can uh, notice here, what is involved in building a, a real-time communication uh, tool? Uh, so many big companies do it. Google has plenty of tools, docs, sheets yeah, that you know many of you guys might have used. You've got some real-time uh, productivity tools here. Um, you know, Miro, Slack, we, we use it on uh, a regular basis. You've got all these real-time tools. You're using one right now, Zoom. Um, WebEx, Google Meet, all of these are, are pretty fantastic. So, um, you know, I have always been uh, curious and interested in being able to use these things and actually not only use, but also um, build upon it. And especially given the time that we're in right now with the pandemic and everything, it the, the need for these tools have actually increased significantly. So, you know, what is it, what is it required to actually build a tool like that? Well, I think it's pretty um, straightforward. You need a socket connection. Um, so a socket connection, as you can, uh, you can see in a picture, is the term is derived literally from, you know, putting those wires together into those plugs. Um, and, and there is a, a great presentation by, by Dan uh, tomorrow who's gonna talk about, you know, uh, Microsoft has built a technology which actually makes this really, really easy, uh, you know, in using the, the fluid framework. But um, regardless of that, so once you have the socket connection, the only other thing you really need is a switch, uh, some kind of a UI. And, you know, what are the tool better than Angular to actually uh, to do this? So. What I wanted to do here is uh, I wanted to kind of show you guys how easy it is to build a tool from scratch, um, you know, using Angular as, as a core technology. So, um, and I, I don't know if, it, if this exists um, outside in, in real world scenarios today, but uh, if, you, if you just think about it, right, I've got this scalable vector graphics uh, and SVG layer. And um, if I start writing, um, if I start writing, uh, you know, on on this board, as you can see, SVG events is um, uh, constructing the the paths dynamically, and I, I want to just kind of, you know, take you guys towards what's involved in actually building something like this. So if I dive deeper into the code, what you'll notice is that we have um, uh, a, a component. Uh, and this isn't a very popular feature of Angular. I haven't seen a lot of people actually use this today, but Angular lets you directly put SVG as a template URL. Uh, for anybody who's coded web before, will probably realize that this is extremely difficult. You have to always use these special selectors uh, and like create element dot, uh, uh, you know, document dot create uh, element ns. So you always have to specify a namespace. So you can not just use standard document query selectors. You have to go ahead and use a, a lot of these, um, you know, strange uh, um, extension commands for vector graphics. Now Angular makes this really simple. So what I was able to do is just put together an SVG element and uh, go ahead and, and build an, a, a loop of all the SVG elements that I may have, uh, code the SVG as dynamically as uh, you know I wish with all the different attributes. Um, and, and just like that, uh, by attaching uh, the events of uh, what you know, your, your mouse events, uh, what may have you, I was able to go ahead and create this interactive whiteboard. Now, if you are interested in actually the, you know, looking at this in, in a live fashion, what I have done is I've deployed this on a website and I can even go ahead and share a link with you guys. If you wanna just go ahead and, and 
interact with it. Um, it should allow you to kind of just join the session. I see uh, some of my friends might have already joined the session. I'm going to use uh, my son's iPad here. Um, I don't know if I can see my video here, but I'm going to use my son's iPad here with the Apple Pencil. And I'm going to try and write. Okay, so what you um, what you notice here is okay, and there are multiple people who can actually join and, and write. So um, what I've done is uh, just so that whiteboard doesn't go crazy. Uh, what I've done is I've got like up to five participants and and hundred attendees. So if people are are coming in and joining and and looking at what it is, they they actually can. It's a, a collaborative whiteboard tool. Um, so everybody else, if it says attendee here, um, if it's not a participant, then all you can do is just um, read, uh, you know, uh, it, it's like a read only thing. Um, and uh, what else I wanted to, uh, what else can I do here? So the, the best part about the, the vectors, uh, as you can imagine, is that, you know, no matter what it is on here, um, you get a pixel accurate, information, um, even when you resize into a really small screen. So, you know, you're, when you're loading this on, on a mobile platform or anything as such, it just goes ahead and, you know, comes up. So you can, I think whoever is writing is also creating at the same time. Um, and, uh, you know, this, this is uh, basically what it works. So using socket connection, um, just a simple Angular script to go ahead and, and you know, put together your SVG uh, element, I'm able to go ahead and build an interactive whiteboard mechanism. So that's, uh, um, uh, you know, that's in a nutshell. I'm happy to go through uh, the, the code here. Um, you know, as you, can, as you can see here, I'm using the dimensions of whatever the element is that the whiteboard, uh, the SVG object is, is inside. Uh, you've got this view box, so I'm matching the, the dimension. That's extremely important because when you're going in a narrow screen or a wider screen, your elements automatically match your aspect ratio and uh, go up and beyond. Um, I'm checking for a touch event. Uh, I ho I'm hoping at some point Angular will have a better mechanism to detect a touch event, I just have a little private function to detect if it's a touch event or a regular mouse event. Um, universal event um, is basically giving me, um, if it's a touch event, it's gonna give me uh, what I have, uh, what I'm able to find by simply, uh, uh, what I'm able to find by, by taking that offset because SVG is at a level I need to identify how much distance it is from the top left or, or top uh, uh, from top and, and left. And so I'm uh, basically taking those dimensions out. Um, other than that, I'm doing some um, uh, fine tuning for the events because as you guys probably know, the mouse events will give you a precision of up to like eight to, to 10 different decimal values. So I'm just shrinking it down to just uh, three digits at the point and uh, here are my events. So if I'm just gonna start collapsing this logic here. I've got a start event, I've got an in progress event. So when you start and then you start writing and then I've got a stop event. Um, this is all the code I have. As you can see, it's like about hundred lines of code uh, all within a, a single file. And uh, I've got myself a, a collaboration whiteboard. So what you see is uh, I've got this WebSocket event handler here as well. So as I'm writing, as I'm going through each of my events, I'm also able to send the event across uh, to the other side. Um, uh, and, and that's what the um, WebSocket service actually does. Uh, obviously we are on a limited time, so I'm kind of just speeding up the, the process. I won't be able to go into a, a WebSocket connection and how that actually works. But it's, that's also uh, super interesting. And I think there is a great presentation tomorrow that you'll actually learn more about this. Um, that's pretty much it, what I wanted to share with uh, everyone. Again, I just encourage everyone to you know, go ahead 
and build and more collaboration tools like that. I, I um, certainly want to, you know, keep, uh, I certainly want to keep building more upon these things. And uh, yeah, if, if I get to learn something from you guys, that'd be great as well. That's all. Thank you.